for what are we going to talk about? shows and Marie's just sitting there watching all this go down but anyways welcome everybody to the round table here on hamiltonradio.net channel hr2 i am your host john brecco and before anybody gets this shirt confused it says real men rock me, <laughs> and we thought it said real men love me so let me straighten that shit out right now it cuts off the real men it's the fucking worst but anyways i'm your host john brecco and i've got <laughs> anyway, you're fucking me up already. Are you supposed to be playing Apex? What is this? <laughs> what is happening? Like I said, I'm your host, John Brecco, and this is a very special show that I'm bringing to you guys today. I'm bringing three people from the West Coast. I've never done this before, and I'm very excited to bring you guys on, despite getting remotes thrown at me and shit. <laughs> I just knocked my keys over. <laughs> and it's like cards. Oh, no. Alright, well, anyways, without any further ado, <laughs> we got Henry Garcia, Chip Nicholson, who I almost lost in Wii a couple seconds ago. And we've also got Maria Bergery. I Did I pronounce that right? Nope, you absolutely did not. Alright, Congrats- how do I pronounce it? Just so I know. <laughs> Bruguer. You, you Bruguer? Bruguer. Just Bruguer. Just <laughs> pretty simple. It's the complete like, opposite like, of what you said. John. <laughs> so close. You were you were warm. You were very warm. <laughs> no, no I, was, I was very cold. I'm not used to that. I'm fat. I have, I have to be honest, John. I thought that when you asked us to do the show and it was called Roundtable, that it would include like a pizza delivery from Roundtable Pizza. So Bro, I'm now I want pizza, dog. Yeah, what happened to that pizza, man? I don't know how I'm going to get you guys pizza so considering you're on the West Coast, so I didn't know how that was going to work. We can make it work. Do you know, do, you, do they have round table pizza in Jersey? They do have a pizza place actually next to the station, so no, I could have gotten it myself. No, not round table. Not, okay. Round table pizza is a brand. Like, I think you need to find a show that says real men eat round table pizza. <laughs> What, do you want me to, like, make this thing? Because I've never done yes, it. Yes, like that. You should at least, like, show up with pizza and eat it in front of us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Round table pizza was like the Chuck E. Cheese without the Chuck E. Cheese, wasn't it? It was, like, the shittiest pizza. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There was, like, there was always, like, three or four fucking um, arcade games that no one wanted to play. <laughs> and, the, and, the one, and the one guy selling fucking every kid, like, crystal meth in the back and shit. Yeah, yeah but this is not a past tense pizza place. There's one at the Westfield Fox Hills. Yeah, and there's... It, 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 what, 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 what I think is funny is because I, I went to one recently, and they still have carpet. <laughs> <laughs> I like, That's like what the fuck? There's, like, all kinds of cheesy stains on the fucking carpet. Oh. <laughs> They have the carpet from 86. Oh. I think that's less bad for when you drop the entire salad bar on the floor. And you're like, oh, it's carpet. It's fine. <laughs> this already fucked, so this is fine. I don't, know, like, I don't know what this is. I don't know. <laughs> I, I love how what this is This is on the East Coast, right? No one on the East Coast knows what the fuck we're talking about. We might as well be talking about, like, hometown buffet. <laughs> 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 Speaking of buffets, fucking rest in peace, plant uh, soup plantation. Oh, is that out of business now? It is completely yeah. out. Of ev- yeah, and that's that's like about to everything. Every fucking buffet is about to be out of business, bro. Like, damn. 
Like you can't. Who's gonna go to a buffet right now? Like you gotta That's really true. fucking be yeah. fucking kamikaze with your mouth. You gotta be a so savage. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like I wanna, I wanna. I want to eat on the cheap and die, motherfucker. <laughs> no, Vegas is going to be so much better now because all the people who go to Vegas just to eat all you can eat buffets. Yeah, no, it's not like that. Exactly. Exactly. I can't exactly. to ruin the Vegas. I can never afford that trip, though. I do want to come out there one day, but it's just a matter of getting the money to do it. So, oh, just go, that's right, because you're on the East right. Coast. I keep thinking you're out here. I'm like, it's only like 50 bucks to go. Up. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're up to getting you like, gotta, like, take a bus and like a couple of trades and you'll be there, I swear. <laughs> John, I John, I, the first step to getting the money to come out here is getting on a radio show that'll actually make you money. You, you need to like drop your Venmo in here and get people to send you donations. Yeah, I've always. I've always felt. Wait, bad. we're not. Wait, we're not getting. We're not. We're not. We're not gonna. Get, we're not getting money today. We're not. No one's getting paid today. You could tell everybody your Venmos. I'm not gonna stop you. <laughs> I'm fucking with you. I'm fucking with you. <laughs> I, I have no place to put it right now. I can easily go live, but that's all I can do. If anybody needs to <laughs> wearing somebody else's grandma's shawl. Anybody needs some money to do, Henry, just looking at you. Like, Chip was running a Venice startup out of his kitchen, so he doesn't yeah. need the money. No, no, no. Not at all. Okay. <laughs> no. I'm on, like, five different things right now. No, but honestly, I've always felt bad about doing it because, like, I have a job and, you know, I'm able to work right now. So, you know, I... The reason why it makes me feel bad is because I want to, you know, try to have somebody else get the money that I could be getting that, you know, because I already have it coming in. So, you know, somebody else can use that, you know, whatever amount donation. I, I just need it right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, you could ask for donations and then donate the money to, like, a charity that you like. To chip. Don't eat the fucking chip, man. Oh, yeah. Didn't you say you broke your foot? Last two pieces of IP. I'd love to hear your foot. I got it's you. Not me. It's not me. <laughs> All right. He's out of commission for the rest of the show. You're going to continue to do this you need to learn sign language. Is he really doing another show right now? I'm going to do sign language at the next open mic. <laughs> Yeah, bro, he was on a Zoom chat. He was hosting something. I was like, how the fuck are you going to make this work? It made his own nonprofit so that people could donate money, but the money's just going to him. No he's thanks. like, oh, just try and do that. Who are you telling no thanks? Everybody donate oh. to the Chip Nicholson <laughs> Foundation. No, my, my, my wife just asked me something. Oh, your wife. Okay, like, cookers aren't supposed to be working. It's, it's a threat to society. <laughs> your window now? <laughs> Thanks. She, she was yes. over there. <laughs> Thanks, bro. Uh, you know what? Speaking of hookers, do you know what their strip clubs in Portland, Oregon are doing? I no. Know. Oh, wait. I do. I do. Drive by uh, strip teases for food. Like that. You can order takeout from a strip club and then for your food and do like a strip tease in your driveway. Yep. That's crazy. They, start, they started doing that. A couple of a couple of strip clubs in LA started doing that. Oh, they did. Yeah. That's what's really crazy to me is like, you could just deliver the food and probably make the same amount of money, and they're still like, nope, we're gonna dance. Yeah, we're gonna dance. No, but they, but like my buddy, my my. The only reason why I know is because my buddy uh, went in on went in with a couple of his friends and ordered some food. <laughs> <laughs> and they put that shit on they fucking IG Live. The they had that shit on IG Live. Um, it was a, uh, it was a, uh, what is it? Sam's Hoffbra. Oh Shout out to Sam's Hoffbra in downtown LA. Holy shit. That's Did so crazy. Is it, uh, in, in Oregon. Best nachos in town. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you John <laughs> <laughs> in Oregon, the strip clubs are supposed to have really good food. Like in Oregon, strip clubs are known for the steak that they serve, but I don't know how that is here. 
I mean, you can answer that. I have no idea. I don't know either. I don't know what's going on in Portland, Oregon with strip clubs. I'm nowhere oh. near there. Hey, I, mean, I, I, can't like, I don't know. We're hey, part of this conversation. Hey, what strip club? Chip, God dang. Hey, Chip, uh, Chip and Maria, did you guys see um? The so return you, from you, when I left. <laughs> <laughs> you got pivoting, so pivoting from so, pivoting from strippers to some to some hood shit. Um, John, I don't know if you really realize this, but car chases in LA are like NASCAR fucking in the South. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> are they really? <laughs> and and, uh, and we, we did you guys hey, did you guys see that the car chase that was happening the other day? Everybody was no, it was a fucking uh-huh. amazing. Uh, well, I guess I, I guess I just have a bunch of hood ass fools on Facebook that were just do you know how you can you can do live parties now? I had a bunch of homies doing a live party with a fucking. I don't really look like a person that has a lot of hood ass friends, so I think I don't fall into that category. <laughs> Damn, damn, all right. traffic we, for a car chase. Yeah, no, it was great. It was great because, like, I was laughing because one of these dudes um, had his friend run out of the fucking house, and, you know, the, the helicopter's filming all of this. It's live, and this guy's taking off, and he had a good distance away from the cops, and he slows down, he stops, and somebody, you see somebody run out of the house and runs up to the truck and hands them, like, what looked like a fucking alcohol, a bottle of alcohol. And then they take off again, <laughs> and the guys like cheering them on, like yeah. <laughs> like he it was the funny. Like threw it out the window, like stiff. It was it. like it was like the it was like the 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 NASCAR version of like changing your tires. You know what I'm saying? It was like oh, okay. in NASCAR so they, they make pit stops pit and stops. change the tires. It was it was pretty fucking funny, man. It's like it's like it's funny because it really fucking happened. You, the footage is still out there, Maria. You got I gotta fucking tag you on it. It's and you have to send it. That's so funny. Yeah, no, I want to check this yeah. shit out. Definitely. Fucking ridiculous. The thing that's here though is like it's either the greatest thing that's ever been on TV or everybody dies. There's no middle ground. Nah. Definitely. I was just trying right. to bring. Way, way down, you know, just trying yeah. to bring the conversation all the way down to the ground. Trying to bring it down. Like, yeah. Takes, taking us on a roller coaster, like, what the I, fuck? I, 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 love, I love that you tie-dye all your shit, yo. Yeah, I just made more. I just finished this. I got matching pants. Woo! Hey. <laughs> Bro, she matches the wall, too. I didn't even notice that. Is that, a, is that a quarantine thing, or, like, you've always been tie-dyeing your shit? Um, I think I've been wanting to do some tie-dye for a while, and then the quarantine just sort of lent itself to it. But tie-dye is really popular in quarantine. Like, all this shit is sold out online. Yeah. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah. See? Uh, wrong cat. I'm saying, yeah. <laughs> no, you're not. Please. Get the fuck out of here. The, who the fuck are you? Uh, but no, I do want to ask how you guys have been like adjusting to like the quarantine though. Like, has it been like hard for you guys or? Um, no, it has not really been that hard for me at all. No, it's been, no. Uh, thankfully, um, thankfully I'm existential as fuck. I mean, I'm uh, yeah, I'm as existential as fuck. Um, or ex- existential, I meant to say essential as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> huh? What's your job? I'm a I'm an executive chef for LMU for the uh, Loyola Marymount University. Seriously? Yeah. That's dope. Yeah, but um, so but the, the, we've only been oh, I've only been going to work only because uh, uh, 300 international students um did not fly back because wow. Yeah, they not they didn't fly back because either they um either they were from Brazil and Brazil was not allowing anyone back in regardless if they were resident or not. Mm-hmm. Um and then there was uh, other kids from like Europe and China and Japan and they didn't want to fly back just because of the whole airline situation and, and how mm-hmm. crazy it got. And so we've just been feeding only them and then also just like uh tidying up a lot of stuff we've always wanted to tighten up on as far as like clean deep cleaning and stuff like that mm-hmm. so that's a yeah. cool job it is it, yeah. I, I like i like the i like the i was looking forward to the fucking um because i just started this this job i just started it in uh, september of last year 
and I was looking forward to working for the university because we're in there we 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 when whenever the kids go like we slow down so like I get to have pretty chill summers winter was great you know like I, mm -hmm. I took off is this what, what bit do you think he's doing right now which bit do you think he's doing right now they don't even know <laughs> I'm trying to figure that shit out uh but I just uh, saw yeah him yell so, like it's something huh I just saw him like yelling at like something I'm trying to figure <laughs> that out like maybe he's like doing something from like the first show I saw him on. I don't know. Wait, so Henry, what's your favorite thing to cook? Like not at work, like just in general. Um, <laughs> to be honest, I cook a lot of vegetarian shit. That's cool. Um, yeah. What do you um, do? So like, I like to do um, I like to do a lot of uh, casseroles with mm -hmm. uh, be with Beyond Meat. <clears throat> um, your meat is really good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I like to. Uh, I like. A, I like. I'm um, like. I like a lot of like Italian food. So I like. I make. So I make pretty good um, pizza dough from scratch. Wow. Um, That's hard to do. Yeah, yeah. It, it's 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 all in the kneading. It's all mm -hmm. in the kneading. Mm -hmm. um, and then pastas. We like to do pastas. Um, a lot of Italian food. I like a lot of. I'm Guatemalan, so a lot of like tamales and shit. Mm -hmm. Are you adopting right now? Because I'm interested in moving in. <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe, maybe when this shit slows down, we'll have a fucking comedy. We'll have one of the com laughter hour comedy parties in my backyard. That would be fun. Dude, that'd be dope. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All the, once all this shit slows down, like, so what's crazy is, um, my wife and I, we 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 bought this house like right the week before everything went on lockdown oh wow. oh like, shit. We, si we signed off like we had started since january looking for a home and then we literally signed off like this is our home we signed off and then a week late we all, we knew that this fucking coronavirus from wuhan was out there and <laughs> and then all of a sudden like a week later like we go on lockdown and we're like oh my god this was the biggest mistake i was afraid i was gonna lose my job like I didn't jesus like we're like right now, finally, like the past three weeks have finally like simmered down. We're like we're not did, like freaking out. Did, did they uh, set up shit for you guys, like the government and everything? Did they set up like in, stuff to help you guys, you like for new home buyers and shit? You know what I'm saying? Um, I never even thought of that. There, there's yeah, there's some programs out there. Um, we uh we didn't we don't really qualify for them because we went through like a private bank. And not like one of their like Freddie Mac or like fucking banks that they do. Mm -hmm. But even then, it's mm -hmm. fucked up. It's fucked up because mm -hmm. um, uh, I was we were reading into it, and they fucking they end up adding all kinds of extra interest on the back end. So they just gonna fuck everybody up. Like even if you're not paying right now on the on the back end, you're just gonna owe so much more. Um, you mean you mean you mean just for 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 housing shit? Yeah, just mm -hmm. for like, like as a yeah, because like to like uh, there's people that are freezing their mortgage payment, so oh. like so they don't pay because they're really hurting, you know, like maybe both people in the household lost their lost their jobs or whatever, and they can't keep up. So whatever they're not paying on the back end, it's gonna be like really really high interest. Fuck, that sucks. It sucks because then the banks end up making out in the long fucking run, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the so housing so weird. Yeah, mm. and you know what the you know what the fucking joke about all of this is is that like my wife and I have been holding out on buying a fucking house for three years. We're like, dude, any fucking minute now, we're like, any fucking minute now, the fucking market's gonna crash, and then we'll get in. And then finally, we were on vacation this winter, and we we're like, fuck it, let's just buy a house. Like, let's just fucking do it. And we do it, no. and the fucking market's about to crash, crash! after we do it. No! <laughs> no way! <laughs> you could have no, you could've got it for so cheap. I could have got this crib cheaper, bro. <laughs> oh, you're about to lose all your money. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Don't say that, motherfucker. <laughs> You've been panicking long enough. <laughs> That shit was fucked up, man. <laughs> what part of town do you live in? Uh, I live like by the Forum, South Central. Oh, 
You're not that far from me. I live in uh, Playa Vista, I think. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, mm -hmm. like, right, I work, yeah, LMU's right over there. Right, I can okay. almost work from my place. So right, Wait, right before, Playa Vista, Playa Vista, Vista Playa? is like, it's right, right, right by, uh, like, Marina Del Rey on the, on the It's right there. Side. Yeah, it's, it's on the really south cool. side of Marina. Uh, but, um, okay. but, so, like, I actually lived in Mar, in Mar Vista, well, my wife and I, we've been living there for 10 years. Mm, um, yeah. I work in Vista. Renting. That's why I would I would be able to walk up to the art bar. Mm -hmm. Like I live like like I live like three blocks away from the art bar. Um, yeah, I I work next door to the art bar. Like that's for my whole area for work. Oh no shit. Yeah, that's why I picked that place. Nice. Yeah. yeah. I used to I used to go to the art bar when it was like a fucking Mexican spot where motherfuckers were like uh they had bikini show oh girls. I looked it up on Yelp. And it they they sex trafficked like eighty seven women through that place. Yeah, yeah. I always had that di that digi feeling every time I went and watched sports. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's where you went, huh? <laughs> no, they, they were like they, if you look up, you know the Argonaut, which is like their local newspaper. Yeah, exactly. You can watch all the crazy. It's like somebody got shot there. Somebody got stabbed. Like there was crazy, crazy shit going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they, it was, it was, it was, um, there was hood, there was a lot of hood activity going on in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it, yeah. Sure. Did you go there a lot? <laughs> huh? <laughs> Did you go there a lot? Um, from time to time, like, both my wife and I, like, yeah, like, we just hang out there. She, she likes doing that shit. Like, dude, that's why, I'm, dude, Val, my wife, is, like, set from heaven like i can go kick it at a fucking strip club with her i can fucking fucking do drugs with her we, we yeah we're like we are we're like we're like two rolling stones together like it's fucking dope dude that's dope that's dope that's magic. Good for you, yeah man. i don't know what i did i don't know what i did in my past lives to deserve uh, a woman who ride or dies like her yeah she got any cousins like her or something <laughs> 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 yeah, her cousin is cool. <laughs> Fuck yeah, okay. Okay, we got some of that. All right, we need to talk. <laughs> yeah. Trying to set some bars and some cousins. <laughs> yeah. Yo, did you end up did you end up looking into those bars? I asked. Uh I I'm not sure if I'm gonna get one or not. I'm 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 still uh, it might maybe. They they're <laughs> they're so good. They got the uh, the cookies and I, I would suggest the crunch and rose. Cause it's got the the little crunch, the you know the little rice crispy crunch. They like they, they put the crispies in there, and then they ha they add the the rose water, so it has that little flowery Ooh. aromatic. Yes, it's beautiful. Yeah, dude, whatever they give me, I'll yeah. be happy with. It's great. I think you might have to get it if you're already thinking yeah. about it. Yeah, that sounds good as fuck. I might actually want one to be honest. <laughs> It just sounds like it's good to eat, so <clears throat> sounds like something I'd want to give a shot. Yeah, you should do it. All right. I'll definitely look, I'll definitely look into it. Nah, but Maria, how have you been like during like the quarantine? Has it been like hard for you or um no not really. I have a job like you, so I've been really busy. I work for uh, like a corporate water company. So we were doing a but it's like a fitness water. So we've been doing a bunch of like at home workouts on Instagram Live and so I was really busy doing that and then I started a virtual comedy show on Twitch a few yeah. weeks ago. So that's been taking up a lot of my time. So that's pretty good. It's called comedy and chill. Yeah, no, I saw that. You, I think I saw like a couple of posts about it and like and like I saw it in your bio, that's been going good. Yeah, it's great. I mean, we had the first week. I think we had like fifty some people, and then last week we had less than that. And this, I think it like it's gonna get bigger every time. So you know, like up and down, but it's good. Like people get comics get Venmo donations. People get paid. They're really the audience is really generous. It's great. Hey, as long as everybody's having fun with it, I'm just glad we can still do it and entertain everybody, you know? Yeah, I don't like the people who are, like, anti-virtual comedy, because I think that's just like an excuse for not wanting to bomb. Yeah, yeah, I've been, I've, been, I've been bumping heads with, like, some people that I know that are, like, 
all anti that. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Thanks. Like, and yeah. I, I like your post. You posted like people, you know, like some people are making some pretty good money. I, I actually, I'm actually pretty excited. I just got a thing um, for, um, for uh, doing a show in London. Oh, wow. Yeah. What? Yeah, for Wait, London is for it the English crowd. For wh- is it the global comedy show? It's called uh, what the fuck is it called? Laughs, laughs. Uh, I'll, I'll share it with you guys. I'll share it with you guys, yeah, uh, and, I, and I'll, I'll definitely, I'll definitely like link y'all up and shit too. Um, yeah, cool. and then like, and then, um, and then, um, and then Michelle, Michelle hooked me up with um, with the people for the Japanese thing. So I'm doing a Japanese show on Thursday. Nice. Yeah. Like fuck it, like. Kamo Hazaki. Yeah. Oh damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it, this is an early one. Like this is like a committed one. Like I got. Uh, it's at four a.m. Oh, oh Cause, damn. Because it's, it's gonna be Cause nighttime the time. over there. So oh, it's gonna be. A, I'm shit. gonna get up early. She, um, she says it's a really good. It's, she says it's a pretty big crowd because it's an expat, a bunch of expats as well. Oh my god! Send me the link to that too. I would love to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, um, I did it. I did a show in Austin. <laughs> <laughs> what were you going to say? I did a show out of Austin, Texas, like at the beginning of all this. It's great, too. It's called Comedy Wham. It's a really good show. They stream on literally. Oh, I heard about them. Yeah, Comedy Wham is good. Nice. You you yeah. did a live show, not an internet show, but a live show. In no, no, it was an internet show. It was like they streamed on Twitch, Facebook, Instagram. YouTube. I mean, they were like on everything. It was crazy because the guy that runs it has some tech and so he. Oh wow! So they were on what? He has like a big tech job because I met with him because I was like, "Tell me how you stream on literally every platform, including Instagram Live, because it's so hard to stream on Instagram Live. Like yeah. usually, you can only do it through there." And he yeah. walked me through it, and I was like, "Oh, did he? Did he, did he show you? Do this? Did he show you how to use like an OBS system?" Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's yeah, hard. Just, I w- I don't know. I don't know if I think. I don't know if it's worth doing all that because I think you can stream like on Zoom. You can stream either to Facebook, YouTube, or you can do a caption stream. But you can only stream to one thing at a time. So like I stream to Twitch and I do it through the custom option, and it's perfect. Like Twitch is perfect. I don't know. Twitch is can- Twitch is way better, but it's just not as popular. But I mean, what you can do with the uh, Zoom thing is you can. Uh, zoom it and, and embed it in the, or you can put it in YouTube and then embed it in something else. Like you can put it into YouTube, embed it into Facebook, so you have three different things, you know. Mm. All live yeah. at the same time. Yeah, so know. you embed the YouTube link in the Facebook yeah. post, and then it becomes it's like a whole workaround. Yeah, yeah it's I'm hard. Just, I'm just now learning. I, I, I did a tutorial for OBS just to get familiar with it. Cause I want to start. Um, so I have this. Uh, there, here's another thing that I have. Like a, uh, I have this project that I'm just now working on, and I'm going to start. I'm working with um, Mar Vista Family Center, um, and I'm going to get their kid, the the kids that that you would usually play and do things there at the center. I'm going to through Zoom um, do um, like. Uh, comedy courses on joke structure and stuff. Oh, nice! Yeah. Oh, sure. Um, and like, and I, and and then I'm gonna, cr- and then I want to create a show that's a fundraiser for this fa- for the Marvis the Family Center, so that they can make some money because they've been losing a lot of fund a lot of a, a lot of donors and stuff. Um, mm-hmm. and through these kids and like really just empower these kids also to feel like you know self express and shit because a lot of them. Uh, fa- the Marvin's Family Center is, uh, is like a lot of them are like like pretty hood, you know what I mean? There's a lot of kids that come out of like juvenile hall and shit like that. So yeah. th- that's why I want to learn how to do that because I want to eventually start doing some Zoom. Sh- uh, I want to do that Zoom show through Zoom and stream it. And it's, yeah. it's a vision that I'm working on right now. I just I literally just started it last week. If you want help with any of that, just let me know. Like setting it up or like. It's pretty easy. Okay. Okay. I, I love it. I'm gonna I can have somebody show you. I will. We will. We will. We will yeah. Tutorial. Yes. We'll set up a. We'll set up a FaceTime. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. 
Yeah. Honestly, bro, I'm hopeless with tech. <laughs> I'm hopeless with tech, so I could never help from that. But I wouldn't mind being part of the show because it sounds like it's for a great cause. And it sounds like, you know, you're trying to give kids, like, you know, something to, I guess, like, be able to, like, strive for, like, show them that they can do, you know, different things. So I'm all about it. So if you want yeah. me to be part of that, I could be a part of it, too. So Thank you. let me know, brother. Um, Thank you. I appreciate that. I don't know you guys all that well. How long have you all been doing comedy? Um, me, it was two years in March. Oh, so nice. like, right the shutdown order happened. It was like two years. Nice. What made you want to get into it? Um, well, I had somebody that I was friends with a couple of years ago that was like really pushing me to do it. And I had people like here or there that knew that really knew me, like saw me like make different jokes. And they said, you should do stand up, you should do stand up. And I never thought it would work because this is just stuff I'm saying to people that I know, you know, that they end up laughing at. This isn't gonna work in like an audience that doesn't know what these jokes are about. Mm -hmm. so, eventually, I find a fr one of my friends that, you know, was really into writing like a few years ago and she just stopped. <laughs> So I was like, all right, if you decide to keep writing again, I'm going to give it a shot. And then she started showing me different shit that she was writing. I'm like, fuck, now I got to go on stage. <laughs> you know, I go on stage, you know, do 10 minutes. I end up really liking it. And mm -hmm. I kind of just went from there, you know, went from a couple open mics to fit in Philly, you know, a couple. So your first time doing uh, your first time doing stand-up comedy, you did 10 minutes? Oh, I don't know how I pulled that shit off. <laughs> the longest 10 minutes. Oh, my God. Oh, bro. Eternity. <laughs> the first time I ever did, I did three minutes, and my mouth was so dry, I didn't think I was going to survive. I thought I was going to die on stage of cotton mouth. I was yeah, so nervous. Yeah, by the end of it. That's like me when I wear the mask where I, when I, wherever I go now. Like, I just feel like I put my face on the inside of a pillow. I had to shave my beard because it was so bad because it was getting caught in it. Wow. Damn. Henry, how long have you been doing comedy? Uh, so, real talk. So, I've only yeah. been doing comedy since October. Okay, that's what I thought. I thought you hadn't been doing it that long, but it's also like I thought I was fooling myself because you're pretty good. Thank you. Yeah, funny. thank you very much. Yeah, it was in October. Um, so it was actually like around August when um, I did a, a I, I've always like liked to joke around and, and, and all of that and just got like a really spunky kind of vibe and shit. But it was in it was in August uh, when I just like realized like I've been not wanting to do it because I was afraid of failing. Like I'd go hang out at clubs from time to time and watch comics. Mm -hmm. And and I was like, I don't want to do it. And then I don't want to do it. And then I fucking I said, fuck it. I'm gonna enroll myself into a workshop. Mm -hmm. And I did the I did the Greg Dean comedy workshop. Um, in Santa know. Monica. He's 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 really really good. He's like he's he's he's, uh, he's coached a lot of fucking really good comics. That's good. Um, and and it's pretty he's pretty he's pretty inexpensive for like what the value that you get. Like I mm -hmm. I really do I really do a lot of like me getting joke structure comes from like just understanding his 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 teachings and shit yeah. and then um and i just started doing a bunch of, like by by uh by december i was doing a bunch of open mics everywhere mostly at west side comedy because I, I was on the west side mm -hmm. um and then um hitting up improv and then mm -hmm. i did a i got invited to uh to a th uh to do a three minute set at um at uh at the improv at the hollywood improv in february okay. yeah and um and, uh, and, huh what do you mean you got invited uh, someone put like someone put a show together you know what i mean like i got okay it wasn't yeah, a mic it, and it was oh, and it was it was like yeah basically like through greg like you you meet a lot of other people because there's like 
pretty legit comics that like know their shit, but they still mm -hmm. they still go there. Like I was in I was in doing these courses with people that have been doing comedy for like five years, and get, I met Gayla Johnson there. Um, she's mm -hmm. she's all, she's always hanging out there, and um, like Tamer, I don't know if you know Tamer Katan. He's like he's um he's he goes there a lot too, and um. So through them, and then they, they kind of saw something too, a little bit in me, you know, like I was just catching on. And so they, they, they basically put me on a couple of things and then shit was happening. And then all this shit happened. And I'm like, fuck, I'm finally <laughs> doing what I, what I wanted to do, but I was such a bitch to do and now I'm doing it. And then the fucking Rona pops out of nowhere. <laughs> well, right and it's all started getting good and shit too. <laughs> it'll, it'll, go it'll go back to normal. Yo, I gotta ask you though. Greg Dean has like a lot of like YouTube videos of like his class, right? Because I think I've seen it before. Yeah, he 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 posts a lot. He he does. He has a lot of like um uh, tutorial stuff, snippets, like three four minute snippet stuff, like yeah. to like you know like things that you can work on while you're like on a crowd, like what like if a crowd is not like if something's not landing, how to navigate from a joke that's not landing on a crowd and things like that. Yeah, no, because I when I started, you know, I was like looking like a couple things up like here and there, like when I got a chance, I was watching specials, you know, I was trying to just use everything I saw to be funny. I was just trying to soak it, soak it up like a sponge to just yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I came across his videos. I forget who pointed them to me. I think it might have been my dad or something, because he's one of the people in my family that's been really supportive of it. So no, sure. I looked yeah. up a couple of those, and they were probably yeah. some of the he's best dope. things I watched. He's not, I mean, he's been around. Like, this dude, like, fucking, like, one of his first students was Whoopi Goldberg. Like, like oh. he's been around. Oh, wow. Yeah, like, he's he's an old, what, he's a much <laughs> older dude. He's, like, in his 70s. But, like, yeah, he, he's still got a lot of energy, and he teaches really, really fucking well. Um, say, you can't fucking tell he's yeah. that old. As a matter of fact, you know, Chip, you you work at you you work at the improv, don't you? Like at the yeah, booth, at the booth, yeah, right? Yeah. Like because mm -hmm. uh, it was for that that show that I did at the improv. You were you were at the booth. I doubt you remember. Otherwise, you'd be like, oh yo, we met. But you were at the booth with your fucking cast on because you had just fucked <laughs> your shit up. And uh, and you were you like literally retold the whole story to me how you were like coming off a stage or some shit or coming off of something. It was going up, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or going up, yeah. And we were just shooting the shit because I, I have a thing about time. So I got to the I got to the improv like way before anyone else did. And it was just like me and I was like, yo, can I go in and pee? And then you were like fucking cool. And we're like, yeah. And then we're just like fucking then we just started shooting the shit for like a little bit. That sounds sounds a lot like me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he fucking remembers. Well, I mean, I smoke a lot no. of weed, so of yeah, course they, I wouldn't remember. Yeah. No, I, it, and, it, and it doesn't, and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if he remembers or not. I mean, yeah. the only, the only reason why I, I, I put two and two together, because I, because we, we, we've been doing those Zoom shows with that Maria puts together the, the yeah, Zoom yeah, yeah. Mics, but I didn't even put it together then. It wasn't until you mentioned that you, that you broke your arm or, or that you broke your foot, or whatever, mm -hmm. and fucking. And that you worked at the improv, and I was like, "Oh, that's why this fucker looks familiar." Is when I realized. Dude, I just assumed I I met you like in the desert on some acid trip. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> in some music just, festival. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, cause like, well, like, well, I think it was 2018. I went to, um, it was called the Big Fire Comedy Festival, and it was in it was in the desert, and it was this huge like comedy festival and everything out in the desert. You camped for like four days and everything out there. It was crazy. And everyone did all the drugs. It was insane. It was yeah, insane. I heard about that. Didn't it only right? happen one year? Drugs. Yeah, it only happened one year because we almost yeah. burned down the whole desert. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh my God. Crazy. I never, I never done like- This was, a, this was like an actual- before. This, this was, this was an actual organized event, or was it just like yeah. a bunch of people just no, saying, "Let's go do this"? Organized event. There was built stages. There was uh, there. Were, it was amazing. It was amazing. Oh, <laughs> four days of just. I've heard uh, stories. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Jeff, how long have you been doing comedy? Uh, I think it'll be eleven years in August. Oh my God, that's a long yeah. time. How do you feel about it? Where you're at? 
I love it. I just, it's just, it's a journey. So, I mean, it, it does it, it, you can't compare it to anybody else because you're just going to get depressed or, or discouraged, or you'll, you'll get a big head about yourself that you don't need in the moment. You know, I yeah. just, I'm just happy. I'm just happy for where I'm at, where I'm at right now. I'm happy that I can still play. That's it. Right. Okay. I still get to play. That's all I want. Mm-hmm. I just want to play. You, do you go on the road or anything, or are you just only in L.A.? No, I go on the road as much as I can. Um, people consider San Diego the road, but I don't really consider that the road. You know, yeah. it's, like right, it's like right there. You know, I, I just, I don't know. <laughs> like how, how far do you have to go before you consider it the road, though? Personally, like, I think, personally for me, it's like out of state is the road. Like, if you go out of state, I mean, California is a big state, so if you go up to, like, Sacramento and San Francisco, I'll consider that the road, too, you know, because it's huge. Yeah. But, like, but but if you go from L.A. to San Diego, it's like, all right, well, whoop do fucking do Like, you know, that's not the road. No. (laughs) (laughs) I got a a tour of fucking Pismo Beach. I know, right? (laughs) I went on my Irvine comedy tour. Shut the fuck up. (laughs) We don't like to take coffee to or hit up all the clubs. And- <laughs> what What about you, Maria? Um, how long? I think I've been doing comedy almost three years. I think it'll be three years next month. I don't know. I'm bad at keeping track, but I'd always wanted to do it, and I was scared and whatever. So I started when I was 27. I'm 31. So yeah, about three years, I think. Um, and I took a couple. I was You're doing really Portland. good for three years. Really? Bullshit. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, yeah, I, I, thought, I thought you were gonna say a, I thought you were gonna say a little longer because your, your your jokes are really good. Oh, thank you, thank you. That's nice. <laughs> um, no, I uh, I took a couple classes in Portland where I was living, and I was working at Nike when I was living up there, which is why I moved. I was in LA, and then I moved back, and I took some classes that taught me like joke structure really well because I think. I'm more of a storyteller, so trying to, like, make stories funny was hard for me because I was like, oh, I can just get up and talk, and, like, shit will just be funny because when I talk to people in real life, it's just, it's like you guys, like, it's funny. Like, that's, I feel like that's how everybody starts doing comedy. Right. And then I realized you really do have to have, like, a setup and a punchline and all that, and so that took me a little bit of time, I think, to get to where the exaggeration of a story kind of made more sense where I felt like I wasn't lying to the audience but I was exaggerating enough to like get them to understand what I was trying to make funny Mm -hmm. Uh, I did that and then I did some open mics in Portland and for whatever reason I just wasn't super jazzed about it and then I moved back down to LA and I was working a lot and I was like I don't know I feel like I should get back into comedy and I'd been writing but I hadn't been going to anything so I just started going to write I guess last February and then just as time went on I started to go more and more to the point where I was out at Mike's like seven nights a week and Mike's shows and I think by the end of the year I'd gotten up 200 times since February so it's not bad effort wow yeah since last February or this February this past February 2019 to now uh, 200 times that's great February 2019 to December 31st 2019 I got up 200 times nice I can't believe you so did you make it it was your intention to like keep up with what how many times you went up yeah I was just doing it because it was like for accountability like I wasn't trying to pull an Ian Russo where he's like I'm gonna get up a thousand times and like kill himself over but he also didn't have like a full-time job I think for most of that so it makes it a lot easier but it's hard to it's hard to get to more than two mics or shows in a night in LA because of the traffic. So yeah. I think there was one night I got up four times because everything was in like the Playa Vista Mar Vista area, and I was like, "This is unheard of." Like getting up four times in one. Like you can do that in New York. Like John, if you go to New York, you can get up five or six times in a night just oh, yeah. because it's easier sure. to get to stuff. But um, I don't know. So I was working full time. I was probably working more than full time and doing comedy full time. I was really busy and really tired, but it was working. Yeah. It's fun. I like it. I wouldn't do anything differently. Yeah. No, I know. I'm I'm really excited about this uh, newfound journey that I'm that I'm in, and um, just also like the community. Like comics are like some like once you get to really talk to people, like you guys are like 
you know, like you're very like approachable. Chip is such a fucking nice guy. Like every, yeah. it, it, it's like there's this community, which is why I'm really thankful for like the open mics that, mm-hmm. that are that are being hosted and where we could really hone, like still virtually hone the stuff. Otherwise, I'd be going crazy trying to figure yeah. out like because there's other virtual open mics that are not that are not like fun and people and then you got like people like mm-hmm. fucking heckling you and like it's like there's no like there's no like fostering and community you know what i'm saying yeah yeah and it's like, interesting the background you. yeah when it's so much harder to heckle somebody virtually i feel like it gets just like more buzz in real life like in real life you can play out the heckler because you have a microphone so you're louder than them yeah but in virtual community they're the same yeah they're the same volume so it's like it just cancels itself out but i don't know are you guys on TikTok at all? Are you trying to make TikTok happen? I, I tried to do I tried to do TikTok, um, and I just I I found that I don't have the time to like like I have the creativity and this TikTok stuff that I would like to do, but I mm-hmm. really don't have the time. Like I'd rather dedicate the time into like, you know, uh, tightening up jokes that I have or mm-hmm. or just doing like these things or like you know. Then I got my kid and my wife, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's hard. I started doing, I, re- I read a blog article, this comic, he started putting just clips of his sets that he taped online of like, maybe it was like jokes he wasn't going to use all the time or stuff that he was like really liked, you know, like an old favorite where people want to hear it over and over again. And he just started doing um, subtitles and then posting them on TikTok and he gets like a million views a video. And so I took his advice off of this blog and applied it to my own. And like some videos do better than others, but I have one video that has like 92,000 views. And wow, I don't think Yeah. And then I, I was helping what, another. What, 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 what do you think, um, what do you think led to that? Do you think like the hashtagging, did you use hashtags on it? The thing, you know, the for you page. The what? The for you page. It's like the discovery page on TikTok. Yeah. So I think if you, when you publish a video, it will push your video out to a select group of people who it thinks is going to like your video. And if those people watch your video for the full length, comment, share, or like it, like and um, comment hold the most like value. So if those, if they do those things, then you get pushed out to an even bigger group of people. And if those people like it, so it's kind of like, it's like a viral algorithm and the more shares and like comments and um, completion rate you get, the more you'll get pushed out to people. So like I had a friend, I helped him. He's a road comic, but he, uh, he published a video for him and he has over half a million views and counting. Like, and he's only posted three videos ever. So if you have Instagram, yeah. you have to the follow yeah. the time. It's like, you can have one video just hit. And at some point, that's going to be valuable. I don't think it's valuable yet because there's not like sponsorships and TikTok influencers and stuff the way there is. But I do believe at some point, like agents and managers are going to be like, how many views do you get on TikTok? I mean, on some real shit, I, I mean, I worked as a, as a server for like the most, for like my entire life. And then when I was up here in LA serving, I, I would hear that. I would hear people in company meetings, management and stuff like that, talking about movies and the, the next person they're going to put on and they'd have their profile, their like their, their profile out, like their portfolio out. And mm-hmm. they would be going down looking at who has the most views between the different portfolios. I was like, are you, I'm waiting. I'm just giving them hors d'oeuvres and shit. And I'm just like, are you fucking serious? They really yeah. wow. to look at that. Yeah. I took, I took on camera hosting classes for a couple years when I lived in LA the first time. And it was, the classes were a nightmare, but she was like, it's so dependent. Like if you get hired, like a Ryan Seacrest job, if you get hired like that, they're going to hire whoever has the biggest following. Like if you can be on camera and you can have the skills and you have a big following, you'll get the job every time. And I think that like comedy is a little bit more pure than that. But I do think when it comes to like content and TV and movies, like they want to see that you do kind of know what you're doing enough to like promote stuff. Because right. some of it is like DIY now. Right. Yeah. Honestly, you know, like I remember Vine, you know, like back in the day when people were always posting on that. And it's kind of the same thing, really, when you think about it. It's just through a different site. It's, Vine, it's like Vine with music. 
Well, that's, a, that's the avenue that people use it as. I have, yeah, I have to believe part of the reason Chris Celia is as big as he is is because of Vine. Yeah. You know, he built a fan base there before he had a Netflix special. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's and true. That, I mean... I, mean, I don't I know. TikTok, you got to start somewhere with it, though. I honestly feel like, you know, just looking back at it, you know, it was kind of like, I guess, the template kind of like for stuff down the line, like TikTok, you know, even stuff like Instagram stories, you know, all that stuff. You know, it started with that. Mm -hmm. I think, though, like if you're a comic and let's say you only have a limited amount of time or you only have a limited amount of skills and you're not going to. You're, you know you can't do Instagram and Instagram stories and Instagram Live and TikTok and Twitter. Like, it's pick the things that you're good at. So like, if you're really good at writing one-liners, be on Twitter. If you're really yeah. good at video content, be on TikTok. If you like editing, be on TikTok. If you want to make longer-form IGTV stuff, like, I don't know if you guys know Maddie Silverstein, but she made a whole IGTV video about how she's dating a ghost. She's like, I've been ghosted by so many guys. I just decided to do <laughs> It's like a five minute video and it's hilarious and it works perfect on Instagram. So it's like, just pick what you want to be really good at and then yeah. go with that. I can see myself doing the Instagram one. <clears throat> what was that? I can see myself doing the Instagram one, you know, just doing like three, four jokes at once and then, you know, just putting it there for everybody to see, see what they think of them. Yeah. Uh, my girlfriend, so Instagram, you can do a whole started. bunch of different things. It's like yeah. Yeah. Instagram is like so there's so many different ways you can tell a joke on Instagram. Yeah. Right. And then um, not only that, like a lot of stuff that you do post like on TikTok, you can just kind of like put it into Instagram anyway. So, yeah. 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 I don't so, know. I work okay. with media, so if you ever have questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Because I'm. You, you already know I'm going to give you a call. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to set an appointment up with you. <laughs> How many followers do you have on TikTok? Uh, let me look. Oh, I think I have... oh my bad, player. <laughs> you said what? I have a few hundred, and I've only posted Damn. a handful. Damn. Damn. My All friend right. has half a million. That's crazy. He posted three videos. He has a thousand. He's, he's, only only posted, crazy. he's only posted three things. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, Lydia that works at the um. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how she did it. <laughs> she just went viral, but she's got, she gets like, I don't know, she's got a lot of followers. She has so many. Yeah, I saw her the other day. I was like, I looked, I just looked at her. I was like, what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> where she come from? Lydia from where? She works at the oh, Improv. Okay. And she's like super like millennial Gen Z. Like she's really tapped in, I feel like, to all that culture, but. For sure posted a video about how she was a horse girl growing up and she had to clean horse dicks and they were so big that when she saw a real dick she like didn't know what to do with it and tiktok's pretty conservative because it's a chinese company so they took down her entire account after it went viral what no i didn't know that back now but they did take it down wow i didn't wow. know that That's so they fucking basically took her a bone mm-hmm it was crazy. crazy. She was yeah, so yeah. viral. Yeah. Fuck. All right, but we are at the end of the show. I really wanted to try something different, bring a bunch of new comics on from the West Coast that I didn't really know. And first off, before you know, I end the show just because we are coming up with that hour mark. I want to thank Henry for you know doing the show last week because without it. I would have never met you guys and got to try this. And I definitely want to have you guys on like other shows that I produce and just on through here. So I'm glad we got to have the conversation. I'm glad I got to do this with you guys. And, you know, thank you again for being on. I appreciate it. Thank you. This is so fun. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation, John, man. Yeah. I'm glad you guys had fun with it too, honestly. But okay. anyway, we do. This has been the Roundtable here on HamiltonRadio.net, channel HR2. I'm your host, John Brecco. We'll be back same time, same channel next week. Deuces, everybody.
Opinionated, insinuating the word and sin only, then you hate it. I'm always getting so high so you can gaze up. I'm going super saying, hence the reason that I blaze up. It's future may I'm in the major in the game, no more mumbling. I'm actually saying something, you lame ass suckers. The beats is infinite where I'm from, and the timeline has only begun. You stunned. To the people.